Well, today's video should be all about happiness and goofiness and Christmas celebrations, but I think today should be dedicated for those people who are not really happy this day. I'm not that happy either. Well, that's it. Hi guys, first of all I would like to wish everybody Merry Christmas and all the happiness possible. Even though this time is all about being with family and enjoy Christmas break, these days also can be a nightmare for some people. Some of us have to spend these days alone and loneliness can paint these days grey or even worse. This video will be dedicated for those who have to face loneliness and depression and have to endure pain when everybody is filled with happiness. I hope I can help a bit with telling my story and the fact how reptile keeping can come into play when you want to break out from your misery. Today I'm not going to show clips for certain subjects, instead I will show random segments to serve as background for the audio I've recorded. Whoever watches my videos knows that I have a family. A family I love, but unfortunately it happens that this year I spend in Christmas alone myself. Unfortunately, not long ago I had a period in my life which affected my marriage in a way that made my wife to leave and take the kid too. I want to share all these because I want to show you that there are really bad periods which can be passed, there are depths you can arise from with keeping your sanity. Sometimes all you need for all these is a reptile. So my story, let's say, started when I got a job at a big animation studio in Budapest. The studio is very well known all around the world, mostly from the video game trailers it produced. I was very happy, I felt I was at top of the world, I got good salary, worked with a program that was designed to create massive armies for the movie trilogy Lord of the Rings and had the opportunity to work on leading titles. I was married that time already, everything was going great, for a while. When I was younger, I developed a pretty bad anxiety disorder with recurring panic attacks. I was in my mid-twenties, I felt I can control the situation, so I didn't seek medical assistance. That was a huge mistake. That condition remained, and my sickness kept following me through my life. I had my ups and downs, smaller bigger bumps on the road, but my family was supportive, I felt there wasn't any serious problem in my life. That was my second mistake. Everything I have been suppressing was building up inside, building up, waiting to explode. When I started to feel unappreciated at work, things started to escalate and come to the surface. I started having more and more arguments with my superiors, which resulted in more and more panic attacks. Slowly, but steadily, my condition turned from bad to the worse. The increasing number of days I had to take off from work started to bother my bosses, which made my situation at work even worse. But not just my job suffered from my condition. Soon, I started hurting my family too. After a while, my condition turned my life into a nightmare. The daily occurring panic attacks made my everyday life so difficult, even basic stuff like going out got to be a challenge. In the end, I didn't want to go out at all. Not to the shop, not to have a walk, or take my family outside to spend quality time together. I stopped attending family dinners, I even came up with excuses so I could avoid Christmas dinner. It was really horrible and my wife held on to me still for a while. All these I just mentioned went on for years. I had good and bad periods of course. The good ones opened my mind a bit and I could live my life normally those days, but the bad ones were just as I described them. And unfortunately, the number of bad ones outnumbered the good ones. I was pretty much screwed. At work, everything just fell apart. I really tried my best to earn some appreciation, which I never earned or felt. I started to feel extremely under-motivated and the boss I had that time really didn't like me as I didn't like him either. We just couldn't cooperate anymore. When I realized that I need a change of life, things looked really bad. That time my weight was about 110 kilos, so my physical health was just as bad as my mental. I knew that I needed a break, 
a break from everything besides my family and the hobbies I love to do. I even went to the department director who granted me a month of absence without pay. Unfortunately, I didn't know that it was already too late. The next few weeks I actually started to feel better, with believing that soon I was going to spend the whole month of being with my family. Also, I was looking forward to start exercising, getting my body into shape. I even put my differences aside with my boss, I really felt nothing can bring me down, my well-deserved and long break was near. Well, it was. A long and well-deserved break, but not in the form I was expecting. I got fired. I got fired with the reason, not being cooperative. I just couldn't believe it. I was giving everything I got in the last month, but my faith was sealed long before. No matter how hard I have been working, when I finished my last task on my project, they got rid of me. I was devastated, once again, and the hard part was still ahead of me, telling it to my wife. I never forget that phone call. First, she couldn't believe it. Then, she refused to believe it. Then she cried. She held on for so long, she tried to keep it together, but finally she reached her breaking point as well. Losing my job was something that just put her on his knees as well. Our relationship went downhill from that very moment. I always had great fun talking to my wife. She is smart and funny, and I loved her very much. However, we just stopped communicating, we started living together like roommates. We talked less and less, she spent more and more time browsing on her phone. I went back to my solitary confinement into my room, sitting in front of the PC. Life once again started to fall apart, the only thing kept us together was our kiddo. Days passed then weeks. Being at home was not comforting anymore. Not just for me, for my wife either. We talked less and less, separated into two rooms. We weren't mates anymore, not even good friends. The only thing we really focused on was to keep all these from our kid, causing him as little damage as possible. My condition pushed me to the rock bottom. Life wasn't enjoyable anymore. Don't think about the worst. I never wanted to take my life. I just wasn't enjoying it. Midsummer, it seems, things started turning towards the better again. I found a new job, which seemed interesting, paid even better than the previous one, and travel time was about the same. Everybody was happy, even my wife got to be more cheerful. I felt the sun was shining again, and after a long time, I felt happy again. That was the time my life should have turned around, but for some reason, it did not. Even I got a new job, my panic attacks came one after another, my mood just turned bad once again. That time we had an argument with my wife, and a few weeks later, she told me she doesn't love me anymore, and she wants to leave. I was devastated. I knew our marriage wasn't the best, but I felt we were just having a bad period. I'm a kind of a person who doesn't drink or smoke. I'm not staying out late or cheat on my partner. After work, I was always home and apart from my hobby, I offered all my money to family stuff. I just didn't understand why, but my wife had her reasons, which I can't deny. I really tried to work it out. I promised everything to my wife, tried to show that I can face my inner demons, I can function as a normal husband and father. Even she agreed to go on one day, the next she told me there is no point anymore. It was too late for her, as she put it, you can repair what was broken completely, but it won't be the same anymore, it will still be broken. That was it. We spent a longer period together until she sorted everything out around her and my kids new apartment and then one night, they moved out. I can't even describe the feeling how it was to see them leave. In the end, I was completely alone. Not just with my sickness, but physically too. Or at least, I felt it for a short time. Soon, I had to realize that I wasn't really alone. I still had to take care of a room of animals. I still had my reptile collection under my care, and I was responsible of them. I still had to go out to buy their food. I still had to clean them on a daily basis. I still had something to keep me above the surface. That time, I haven't realized, but my hobby was that, that kept me going, even in the darkest period. My hobby saved me from sinking even deeper into my sickness. Practically, it saved my life, my sanity. I realized, 
the sun still wakes and I still have my boy who I can see whenever I want, it's just he's not living with me anymore. I started to build up myself from scratch again, but this time I built my foundation strong. You're gonna eat lightning and you're gonna... I went out more and more, started running and exercising at home, started eating less and forced myself to go out and do stuff. I've heard something once that really is true. If you want to be stronger, if you want to break boundaries, you got to go out and do something that you are afraid of every single day. So I did. I went out those days when I felt bad, I worked out 3 hours a day, starved just a little bit all the time to lose weight, I went to work even with a panic attack and I broke my boundaries. I started to feel better and better. I lost weight in a pace that really boosted my morale. Finally, got to the point when I felt good in my body. The number of panic attacks decreased, and because of the high intensity trainings, I was sure that my heart is ready for everything. I knew that I will get over it. I knew that I will pass my sickness. For once, I felt finally that I'm in control. My hobby was there. My animals were there, and I was there for them. I started to have plans, and I was happy about what I do. I realized how much I could do in order to improve their lives, and still how I can improve mine. The shadow just disappeared from my life, and I could see the world in colors again. It was a bad period, and I'm not sure if I have something like that ever again. But one thing I'm sure of, I will live for the moment, and I will refuse to be afraid of, especially of things only exist in my mind. To close all this, if you are struggling as I did, get into your hobbies, no matter what they are. Dive into your world you love and hold on to those things that are dear to you. The presence of animals heals the mind. It is true. Taking care of something heals your mind. Cleaning poo and changing water at 5 o'clock in the morning before work was my early morning relaxation and it helped. Watching my animals live was the cure to my illness. Believe me, if you have a bad period or depression, it is good to get something into your life that you must break your habits for. Reptile hobby is wonderful and will help. Start with a gecko that you have to feed and go out to buy food for. Buy a monitor and watch it bonding with you. It will help. You have to just let these animals into your life and let them heal you. Connect with other people who share your interest and enthusiasm. Expand your knowledge and learn new stuff every day. Learn how to shut out things from your life which affect you negatively and learn how to be open to things that are making you strong. If you are feeling bad, just don't forget what you love in your life and don't forget that you are not alone. There are a lot of us that are fighting with our inner demons, but we can win. Seek help if you feel that you need it, you will feel better. You are not alone, even if right now there is no one around you. That was it for today guys. I know, this time it wasn't about particular animal related stuff, but I think it's an important subject, a problem, or hope we can provide a great solution for. I know, I don't have a huge audience yet, but if I could help a bit for just one person, it was all worth it. For those who found this video a bit boring or inconvenient, I say don't worry, the year 2019 will be very interesting as I'm upgrading the enclosures and getting new species. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year!